Because, I mean, you know, people got sick. And... Yeah, well, especially the sore throat, because, you know, English is all in the lips, mm -hmm. so if you call the lips, so you can sit in behind. Mm -hmm. Especially sort of that little ridge, sort of this little ridge towards the back mm -hmm. of the mouth. And then it's, it's there and, and it back. Yeah, I think it's sick and whispering and the person said, I always thought about those things. Um, right. So, uh, let's do a quick review. What's that? To Seychta. Yeah, Seychta da Pusatan Yagi. Kuna Hasahan Kwe Kutik. Say, Ach Shukwa Yedi, Ach Shatriya Seek. Kay who await Chakuzati. Yes, the ship was you got what he has Yeah. Ho ach a ya think it costi ye da to talk. What one panin's way took a nay it hoods a tea. How? What is the good to say ya do a? What ya do cut ka a do ta? Kesh <laughs> Hatchu Nurses uh, when our first daughter was born, we were really thinking, we didn't know what we were going to name him or her. We didn't know if it was a boy or a girl. I said, really good, smart aleck responses. People would say, you having a boy or a girl? And we'd say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or do you know what you're having? I'd say, a baby. <laughs> and, uh, so as we're getting close, there's a little whiteboard that the nurses used to write who was on shift. And, uh, and I put it on the left-hand side, and I put, um, if it's a girl, it'll be kasechja. And if it's a boy, it'll be kudja. And kasechja is this really fine, misty ring. And I've always just, I've loved that word, and I just sort of love that but I'm just walking around with it. And then uh, kudja is a dried hell island floats around and that's what Raven landed on after the flood. And I just love that word because there's a story where the speaker is saying, Kaja, a kaja away ausati. Ye Gaya pa Gosh Kshe Kaja Yahasati. it would be so nice to, to see Kaja. And then he saw it and then he landed on. And he said, Kaja, Kaja Gimus. You did can get a cash house, cash house cook. He said it's called Kaja, but the clinkets of today don't know what it is. <coughs> so I always remembered that. You know, I was, when speakers say, here's something that people are forgetting, like you say, um, if there's an animal and uh, it's flesh, you call it a glee, like Boisus glee, Zisk glee. And if it's a fish, the flesh is called a And uh, Kaja was telling people, like, this is one that people will probably forget. So when they tell us stuff like that, I always try to really remember, because it seems like for the speakers, they're worried about those particular things. Um, a long time ago, like sometimes uh, 
a baby would be born and someone would come forward from the clan and just name it right away. Tashkal, who talks about that when he was born, his grandpa came over from Sitka and said, is that a boy? I want him to have my name so he can stand up in front of me. And he'd say that to us quite a bit. Uh, and there could be times where um, before the baby's born, that say, well, if it's a boy, this person's coming back. And if it's a girl, this person's coming back. They recycle these names. And then sometimes a baby would be born and, and they wouldn't name it right away. And then the dad would <coughs> give sort of a pet name, a fun name, which would later sort of be replaced by whatever name the clan put on. That's what we decided to do with our first. And then we took her to meet um, Shkete. Jesse John, and she said, I want her to have one of my names. And she said, she had these two Dukkawibi names, even though she's Chukawibi. And, uh, and so that's what we went with. And then when the second baby was born, we knew what name to give her. Jesse wanted both those names. So, um, so there's a little bit on naming babies. What are their names? What's that? What are their names? Their names now are Hush Pace, is uh, the oldest. And Shawat A is the youngest. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really it was fascinating because she kak away with tea, shkate. Yeah, duck away the car on goon. It duck away the duck away the car a young Shkate do jitas about it. On I eat the dishi, I eat the dishi when ya ha at uwu at uwa segu yeshit kedach apa ach ach usenu shkate apa shit kedewu dekun ya kuir ase ya wapa. A Joe Haiti de Shi, ye had to us a goo yet. Dech Dakawit, some coo in Kahoi. You chow duck him get ye away, he just ha nach seti ye duck. Ha ha at oo woods, ha nach him get Christy ye, ha at oo woods. As to cut a ya, as to cut ye ha at oo woods had the chunky son. Um, she helped them with some of their atu when they needed it, and so they gave her these two names, which is something that used to happen a long time ago. One is like clans would share names, so that also a Kabwantan name. Uh, and so you see certain names that are shared. Uh, Chihu is a Gen Yehi and the in the Dutcher Wavy name. Uh, and the other thing that you'll see is a long time ago they used to dress their grandchildren up in their atu. And so sometimes with, with atu, like people will see it and they say, hey, you're not that clan. Uh, but we're kind of starting to forget that we used to dress each other. And even people, just because we're showing, you know, you're related to us and through our atu. We have love for one another. So those are some things I think we need to just sort of keep going and keep in mind as we're going forward. Except, um, like Sophie uh, would never make a vest. She would never make a vest for herself for, for her kids, but she she said somebody from the opposite side should. Yeah. Is that kind of traditional? Or? Yeah. So if you're making, uh, and we call it ashkushetna, I'd be. If it's just something for you, but if it's for a cultural purpose, you should be commissioning Don't the opposite know. side. Um, and um, especially if you're going to make it into a who. Yeah. So the difference between that is that you have your best, or you have it could be anything. It could be a shaky, it could be really fancy stuff, it could be really valuable, uh, and people think of you when they see it. Uh, but it's a different category when you make it atu. When you make it atu, you're going to bring it out and you're going to kill money on it. That's what they call it. So you'll put money in it or on it or near it. And then you'll, um, 
you'll usually hold those things up. And then you'll say the names of people. Uh, one of the first things in Kodif, uh, you have your cry songs, you have usually some one or maybe a handful of speeches to help release the grief. And it's the opposite side who does this. And then uh, and then you you shift into fun time. But right before, right before you shift into fun time, you sort of start that transition of feeling good. And then you start bringing out that first meal. But before you do that, you bring out uh, the dish on the fire. And you're going to put a little bit of everything, all the food that's in there, a little bit of tobacco. Uh, you're going to hold it up. And the host clan will say names of their departed. And they'll, so they'll say the person's name and follow the right. To their mouth, right? To the mouth. So you can say the name of the person. And then, and it's it's interesting because you'd want to say it right away, like you said, John, John Smith, John Smith, a day, because if you pot John Smith. Do you have to put the do in there, uh, so it just it comes right away. And then, uh, so that's the first step. And then you then you go through a whole series of things, uh, different songs, presentations. Uh, the clan has been working with the Nakani, who they hire. Like, let's say it's a shuka party, we might hire you as Yenyedi to run the party for through the Nakani. And the Nakani has a huge responsibility, making sure the right people have been invited, uh, showing up, you know, usually a day or two before, and going through some pretty intense planning. A long time ago, all the clans would get together before the Pui. And then they would all be sort of in their separate. Uh, the one thing that Hajakti was talking about in that video, which I've heard other people say, is when those canoes would start arriving for Pu'i a long time ago. And even though if they knew who they were, they had a protocol. You know, so they'd stand out on the edge of the beach. Usually the, the village leaders would be standing up here on the hill and have a runner who'd come down. Good dog, so wait, wait, ye Where is your where is your canoe from? Even if they knew this, it was, it was and it was important. Because if you don't have this process and somebody just comes running a canoe up on the beach, uh, they're probably there to fight. Right? So it's, it's a big deal to make sure that. And there's also you know, respect for one another is really, really important, which is why these processes are in place. And then say where they're from. Uh, and then they might include who they are. You know, if it's all of the traveling together, which is probably what they do, because they have all of their stuff ready. You know, in in their canoe, uh, and then they would, and then they would say, you know, why are you here? And they'd say, we're here to, to be a part of your pu'i. And so it was very, even though it's almost like a scripted conversation, but you need those formalities because you have one community coming to another community, and you're always trying to keep things in, in good relation. And a lot of communities, once they've done that process send the men in and they would lift the boats up with all the people in it and carry them up on the beach because they didn't want that canoe to go dragging on the beach because their dugout canoes are pretty thin. Uh, not every community had those formalities. Sometimes people want to get out and all help carry it up. A lot of community, Angoon especially, is really important for them. They would lift your whole canoe up with everybody in it and bring it up and set it down. Just again, a sign of respect. <laughs> And then they would they would say, um, based on your clan, you guys are staying in that clan house. You guys are staying in that clan house. And then everybody would be in these clan houses the night before, uh, having tobacco ceremonies and getting things ready. And the clans are talking about, oh, well, we're going to bring out, you know, these dances for them, and we're going to do this if we're asked to respond. And that Nakani would be running between all these houses, saying, this is what the host clan is doing. They're hoping you can do this, this, and this. And so everything's really well coordinated so that when you come into that Kuik, um, following all the proper steps. Uh, 
they had a lot of fun things too. Like it was all based on the time. So they had another sort of uh, scripted thing where they put a young person by the door, and their job was to uh, when called upon go look at the tide, and then say, "Get any wood, dog? Get." Has the tide come up? Because when the tide is up, everybody would get in their canoes and go home. And so he'd run out, but um, he knew what he was supposed to do. He'd go out, and if, if the pu'i was still go, regardless of where the tide was, he'd come in and say, Get new wish long, and the tide is out. Even if it was just right in there. And it would, it would be time to go. They want to keep that thing going. So he'd come in and he'd lie down. Um, and then, uh, I can't remember why I started this story. Yes. Oh, yeah, so our clan opposites and stuff. And so um, I, ooh, and there'd be a point from there, uh, when you're killing the money, and when you're killing the money, sometimes you have all of it in a bowl. You might have some of it, especially in hats, if you're dedicating a carved hat, it's a really big deal. Chilcat blankets, a really big deal. Then it sort of goes down to shakyats and button blankets and things like that. Uh, and then, you know, there could be houses, crests, you know, all kinds of things that you could be, you're bringing them out. And when you bring them out, you, you kill money on it. And there's one is, uh, let's say, again, this was a hukah hadi party, uh, and what we do is, uh, and it varies from place to place, but when you guys come in, um, you come in as, as eagles, and you would bring in, you know, a bunch of $1 bills and $5 bills, $10 bills. If you saw someone that you're close to who's a raven, you just give them a little bit of money, just a little bit. It's just sort of a helping hand gesture. Then I would put it in an envelope and I'd write your name and how much money you gave them. When we were collecting money, we would call upon uh, the other raven clans. So sometimes the ones who are farthest away, you know, like if you guys came from Tesla, uh, we might call on you guys first, or we call to specific clans and say, okay, this clan come up, and you guys would all come up and give the counters your money and say, you know, I've got this much from so and so and this much, from, and nowadays they, they read over a microphone. You know, I've got this much from your Chibu and this much from Nobuya, uh, and then you know, your aim closing thing is my contribution is two hundred dollars. Uh, and then it would come to the host clan, and we would go by sort of just everybody, but then the last ones to go would be the leaders of the clan, and also the ones closest to the person that we're having a pudik for. And that's when you're going to see $1,000, $5,000 people drop that in there. Um, and there are stories about guys in, you know, in the 1970s voting around. They would come to Juno, get 5000 bucks in cash, and go back to Huma for their pudik give that stuff out. Uh, so if it was at U, usually you'd give a name. <coughs> Sometimes you would also sing the song that was composed, especially if the hat should have a song that goes with it. Uh, then a, a couple of things happen. One is all that money is disconnected from the people who put it in. You can never take that money back. Uh, you hear about things like that, and there's somebody thousand dollars, and they come up later and they take it back. And that's check on really a forbidden thing to do. Uh, the other thing that happens, so the money gets totally disconnected, and, and you start, the counters will count it all up, and now the total, the clan leaders and the colony will figure out who needs to be paid for what. You know, here's the cook, here's the pallbearers, here's, you know, we commission you <coughs> to carve this hat, here's, you know, $3,000 or whatever. You, some of this stuff is agreed on. On. Some of this stuff is just sort of kind of going rates for things. Like you gave a speech um, at the funeral. Uh, although some of the things that are happening now, it's like let's say somebody yeah, maybe, you know, passes away and I, I go there and nobody asked me to, but I stand up and I give this big speech. And then later, you know, at the hook, I said, you know, you guys should pay me for that. So that's another thing you shouldn't do. Is you shouldn't be invoicing your kind of nonsense. If it, if it comes your way, good. Uh, if it doesn't, so be, you know, but these are some of the things that are getting a little bit tangled today. Uh, but then, so then, we, you know, here's the payments for this and that, and, uh, you know, those who came from Tesla, and here's a little bit extra money for your gas, and here's a little bit extra for this. 
And then once we sort of had paid off the debts here, so 500 bucks for the hall rental, uh, then we would just sort of, uh, and there's different ways to do this. You start counting up the number of people, and then you just walk around and just divide it between them. So we would, so you never pay any of the ravens. The other thing is, is this whole time you, you've got a series of gifts you're giving out, starting with just sort of little fun things, and towels and some other things. And start working way up to some jarred foods that people have put up and some other foods. And then you start getting into some of these gifts. And then, you know, towards the end of the evening, you're giving away your big blankets and giving away your big gifts if you're doing stuff. And I think there's been a movement lately to go towards fewer gifts and things that people are going to use and less stuff from, like, the dollar stores and just little, what do you call it, CPC? Cheap plastic crap. <laughs> so a little bit less of that. Um, and then anyway, some really nice, you know, these blankets are new bucks. The blankets are a big deal. They're a really big deal. Uh, and then sometimes you're giving away, like, you know, woven raven's tail blankets and, and sometimes really big things. Uh, when, after you've killed the money, uh, some of that money gets taken out to put new names on people. And this is where names could go on people. This, put them into a certain status in the clan. This is our Naka now. This is our hit, it's our tit now. This is, you know, where the clan starts recognizing people for their leadership. Uh, and then, so the money gets given out. And now that stuff is out, ooh, and that means it belongs to the entire clan. Uh, and so those are some really important concepts as well. Because sometimes the things that I've seen as well, somebody will put a hat up there, and they'll kill money on it. And then they'll just take the hat home. It's like, well, that should stay with all of the other stuff. It's not your thing anymore. Usually there's like one person who we think of who wears it. Uh, and sometimes it sort of gets that name. You know, this Kuka Chedi has something we call Bert Dennis's shirt, and that's my great grandpa. Um, or the Kaisan tunic is what we call Kaisan Kudas in Klinket. Uh, Anyways, it's a long introduction to class. Let's do some. <coughs> let's review our, our greetings and then we'll do our uh, departures. I think there's a couple spelling errors in here. Point them out when we get there. We'll go through these pretty fast because we've done them. Yuke of Satini. Yuke of Satini. Yuke of Satini. And then for these, for the first one, if you wanted to change it to big C y'all, so instead of yak a ich satini, yak a yuch satini, yak a yuch satini, yak a satini. Second one, if you're going to pluralize that. Yak a ye yat a hush tiny. 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 That's another one. Yak a ye yat a hush tiny. I have to look it up. But it's like um, if somebody's dancing and then they poke their face up over a blanket, there's a verb for that. And it's like, it's good you have revealed your faces, and you can use that as something. I'll bring that one in. Uh, two men of the same clan can use this one. Chaka. 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 And uh, you guys know what the first two mean? What's the first one mean? Or what's it? What would we say in English? Good to see you. Good to see you. Second one, Yeah, it's good to look upon your face. So it's instead of seeing, it's sort of like looking at. So. Uh, don't know how to translate. I'm in. I don't know how to translate. What a a What a a a That's the way to get cocky is that you? Is that you? It's being cheeky. How? Wait, do what? 
How we do what? How we do what? Well, there you are. Away. <laughs> How hot is it? Good? How hot is it? Good? How hot is it? Good? That's the way to get hot enough. You go. Well, you have arrived. Yeah, and you can drop the how, and you just say, wait, what? And these are just kind of being a little bit silly. Hot e is sort of like, hey, you made it. To ha. To ha. To ha. To ha. To ha. To ha. It has dawned on us again. Yeah, and I guess if you're in Juno, you can say, "To Hakansi Yaf was a time." It is rain on us. And then you say, "Ah," oh. like you, know, you can see somebody you know, and you just say, "Yes," right? And it's just sort of a conversation initiator. Also, in thinking, you could just sort of jump right into conversation, right? And then if it's someone that you have this kinship relationship, you can just say that, "Ati." Right, as soon as you come home and see your mom, or you know, if you see your older brother, and then you can just start talking to him. You just sort of call out that, that kinship term. We have to put it as rain on us again. <laughs> and so the thing we remember about questions is we'll always revisit this from time to time. It goes, wasa and it doesn't go because sometimes we do that to signal this is a question and we try not to do that so the good category Ach <laughs> to <laughs> Ach to wush it seen. Ach to wush it seen. Okay, so one by one, they cut a nach das away. You came. Good. Ach to wush it seen. I feel good. Ach to wush it seen. I feel happy. I feel happy. Ach, to who a shake? Something makes me feel good. It makes me feel good, right? And so that's something like there would have to be some context there, uh, but it is something that, that's good to know how to say. Like, you know, someone could say, How? Dane has a thing. Ah, ach, to who a shake? Man, they're really dancing well. So, yeah, it makes me feel good. Um, the sec this one, uh, that K A A underline X should be K high tone A underline X. Uh, so it's short. Uh, that's the way they cut in a cut to look at a. I'm proud of it. Right. And so you could say I have a to look at a. You could say that on its own. But it's sort of like being boastful. Like you could say something if you're talking about somebody who's sort of being a little bit full of themselves. They're just too proud. Too proud. And so it's interesting because, you know, in English there was this whole movement of like native pride and I used to wear these teachers said, pride, right? You know, it was like this native movement. But then as learning clink it, they're like, you don't do that. You don't have to say that. And so it's good to sort of learn these things in the language because there's a sort of default state, you know. Uh, 
um, like there's not a command form to inspect someone. I don't think a command form really exists for that. But I had to check. I was looking through the notes, and like loud speakers, like you don't say that because you should. You just do that. And then achtubuchetin. That's the way you get that wrong. Strength is in there. But when you say achtubuchetin, I feel brave. I'm brave. <laughs> and again, you'd have to have the right context. You know, someone says, what's up, you two? Achtubuchetin. Simmer it down. <laughs> Although, you know, we want to, you could say, if you give some sort of reason, I hear clinking and it gives me courage. Right? So you can attribute things. Uh, and they, that's what these are good to see. And you look at those old speeches from like 1904 that the down hours transcribe. Black cylinder. And they said something like, hot uh, Right? You coming here has given us strength of spirit. And brave or courage is not really what way to translate it, but it's like I feel spiritually strong. Right? I feel I feel up to the task. Now in the middle of the road section. Keshwasa. 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 It's okay. And it's okay. It's, it's really helpful. Chishugu. The same? Same. All right. Good non answer. Chakataya. It's just me. Yep, I'm just me. I'm just me. Yisaku oosh. If you only knew. If you only knew. <laughs> and then you laugh because it's just, you're being really awesomely weird. My uncle is now, and he would just, that's so funny. Okay, now the negative sign, and the context has to be right. So if it's a <coughs> smart alecky thing, or if you really know the person, some of these could be like conversation enders. I'm not careful. So if you just met somebody, you wouldn't want to say them. Maybe the middle ones. Those, any of those would be fine. The ones on the right. The ones on the right. You, you'd have it, it. It depends. Like if you were really sick, or you know, but if someone came up and you didn't. Know them and they said, What's well, that? Uh, but even that is just kind of weird. Uh, we do that sort of in English a little bit. You know, hey, how's it going? Right? How are you doing? Um, sometimes it's not like we're genuinely interested. I don't know. Maybe we are. Sometimes we're not. Uh, so something like this first one, catch it down. Like if that was your answer to someone, you didn't really know them. They could be seen as well. Yeah, so for, to use one like that, you'd probably want to know the person fairly well. Um, you, unless you're just sort of, unless you just want to be silly, and if you're laughing, you know, then they might, they might laugh with you, because you know, humor is it's pretty easy to just jump into humor when you're speaking like Humor seems to be there quite a bit. Um, the poet was on the beginning of these slides, he, he used to tell me a couple times, he's like, when I was younger, we used to watch these old people and we say, all they do is go around and find someone to laugh with. They said, pretty soon we're just doing the same thing. So it was a, it's a really important value to have that humor in the language. Uh, but it's got to be the right, just the right situation. Okay, so now the frowning face section, which there seems to be the most of. Kesh it da. 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 Kesh <laughs> 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 
And now this fill in the blank. Uh, so I guess we'll backtrack just for this one. What's chet yini in English? I'm sick. And now you can have anything can be sick or sore or injured. Achetuch <laughs> yini. You know, I got a sore throat. Ach shan I have a headache. Ach chin my hand hurts. Ach ki yini. So now you can learn lots of body parts, and then you can just really get the complaining going. Chet ushetish. Chet ushetish. Chet ushetish. Chet ach tu ushetish. And this one that's missing now. <coughs> underline right here. This actually underlined. Aunt Hwanuk. Aunt Hwanuk. Aunt Hwanuk. Aunt Hwanuk. Okay. That's the way to take her in a test in town. Wait, none of your business? None of your business. <laughs> none of your business. <laughs> so again, just be careful with that. It's like, yeah, that could be funny, though. It's, it's like somebody you know well. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Here it is. And you want, That's the way to take her in a Bad. Yeah, I feel bad. I feel terrible. Ach tu wu ya niq. Sad. Sad. Ach tu wu asa niq. I'm sick. Okay, there we go. <coughs> can you still see the screen? It's too tough. Uh, I can see, uh, yes. Uh. Okay. Uh, and so this one, it's like the literal translation would be, I'm sitting right next to anger. And so it's one where there is a, there is a specific command form to say, don't. <laughs> <coughs> so now we're winding it up. Dick Quagut. Dick Quagut. Dick Quagut. Dick Quagut.
the verb, I'm going to go. Uh, so that's what this means. I'm going to go now. Get plug. And just means not specifying where. Uh, but the one thing to pay attention to is this day. Uh, in Shingit, sometimes I'll stop and I'll point out where the homonyms exist. Uh, for day, there are four of them. Uh, in, the, in terms of the verb, if it's sitting in front of the verb, uh, and like this on its own, just day, gig, agum. It means um, at that time. Right? In, in, in the context, that's what this would mean. In other contexts, you could be sort of telling the story, say, at the time he did this, this thing was happening. Uh, if it comes after, and it would make sense in this, but um, a good day, which it wouldn't make sense. But if I said uh, um, the same uh, word, I could say a day na good. And we'll start with this one. So there's one that could become suffix. Like I could say ne ke I'm going. This is a motion verb, so it would take, take the place of this one. It looks different because it's attached to a noun. Uh, so to a noun, command form of the same verb, I can say ade na gu. So change the verb changes a little bit. I can say ade na gu de. So that de that pops up at the end of the verb means right now. And most commonly, like if you have to be like nata, nata, go to sleep, go to sleep, not today, go to sleep now. Right? Gook day. Do it right now. Uh, and then the fourth one is a day that appears on its own, and it's like a road or a path or a trip. Is that also come come back here? Yeah, so the, you know the literal translation would be "May you come back" or "May you come again." Sort of like "haku" is like a command form for "come here." So, and here's another one of these homonym things. So before the verb means again. So haku. Come here again. Quan uh, is just a way to soften a command and say like, may you. Uh, you know, we don't have a please and clink it. This does not mean please. It shouldn't function the same way. Uh, but it is a nicer way to sort of use a command. Um, <coughs> and then uh, uh, the s at the end, which would be high tone, would mean like also. Because then you can say, I saw a dog, a bear, and a cat, too. Right? Or I was there, too. So could, could you use Juan at the end, like go to bed? Yeah, if you're talking to like your grandma. Because <laughs> then you would go to bed. Right? But you know, and, and so, or like, you know, I use that one when, when I'm asking people to place the door in class. I'm asking them to get up and do something. So, maybe, maybe you close the door. So it just softens it a little. So hade kut for good. So hade kut for good. So hade So here's uh, again. Hot day is towards this vicinity. Cut the good. I'm going to walk. So I'll come back. I'll come back here. I don't know if it's really quite the Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator variety. <laughs> I think because it's just saying like I'll come back here at some nondescript time. <laughs> 
But I think he'd say, Koch ek what a good I'll be back. I'm going to return. Because that has a more of a immediate thing. Oh, there's another mistake. This should be a low tone yay. So ye ek quasatin so ye ek quasatin so ye ek quasatin so there's a lot of people who use this one but they'll use the perfected form so they'll say so ye ek satin right which is it doesn't really make sense that way you got to go to the ik qua and this is getting us to start looking for future verbs. This kwa, that means I'm going to every single time you see it. K underline K W A, then some verb. That means it's always I am going to. Kwa ha, I'm gonna eat. I did cut kwa good. I'm gonna go over there, right? Ha kwa ha, I'm gonna cut that fish. So we're we're looking at these future forms. There's a number of different prefixes, and so in Klingon, we pay <coughs> attention to these prefixes because they start telling us how the verbs work. Tomorrow, when we come back into our weather verbs, we'll make it up to uh, what the weather was like yesterday, what the weather might be like tomorrow. Uh, and then, to ye ik pa sa teen. So we're going to make sure we're getting all of those. Ik pa, ik so there's a few instances where you're going to get these repeating consonants. Like sometimes you can get ones that have certain repetitive forms, where they'll end with like, there'll be two Ks in a row, uh, and there'll be things like that. And that's a good departure, right? If someone says "get you might say "gunashish," which is really. Dancing well, um, you know, especially when speakers get excited. And the way it, it works for like in English, like so, I could say, "He did a really good job," or "He did a really good job." So it's like how I'm putting emphasis on that. The more emphasis I'm putting.
It shouldn't be a K apostrophe. It should actually be a G or a K. Ziyagin. 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 So the old timers would call this slang. Right? It's taking a word, <coughs> bringing out of how it is usually used. So this would mean, because you could say, uh, later, I'm going to drink coffee again. Right? So it means you're using it as a time reference to say, later, this is going to happen. And then it's been removed from its typical context to be like, later. Right? I have an auntie, she's coming into town now. She's uh, she's probably 80. She's got like an iPhone and an iPad. She's really hip. And I call her on the phone. I was like, okay, Andy, talk to you, talk to you later. And then she goes, later. And then she hangs <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that's it for the any questions. Very good. <coughs> Do you have extra copies of the handout? Let me check. I should. If, if I don't, uh, I'll email it to you. And then one thing that we did talk about, I think that you probably heard this, but I just want to make sure, is we're moving all of our, we're shifting the way our final presentations are going through. So we have to do the last week of classes on those last two days, that last Wednesday and Thursday, because when we'll do our word. And it, it might be, if this is all we got, then we'll just save it for that last Thursday. Because if we only have four or five students, we do that. But we might do it once again more than And then, uh, so you'll only recite your words. Uh, and then <coughs> for finals, you'll come in and you'll do your language presentations. And it doesn't have to be all in Clinket, but it should include an awful lot of Clinket. And you should actually be teaching us some words and phrases. Even if we already know this sort of mock exercise. Teaching, passing out. All right, with Cheesh. Can I have Cheesh? Yeah, if you want to do it with a partner, you totally do it with a partner. Yeah, we'll probably make it easy.